What's up Guardians and welcome back Titans. I'm Profane and thank you for checking out the video. The Prismatic subclass has introduced a lot of new and exciting builds for Guardians to play with, but as exciting as these new builds have been, they lack certain survivability components that can make them much less ideal in a lot of endgame activities. But if you're in need of a build that you can consistently rely on to keep you alive, then there's nowhere else to look beyond a strand Banner of War Titan using the Syntheseps exotic gauntlets. Even with the recent nerf to Woven Mail, Banner of War, and the Syntheseps, this build keeps on trucking, refusing to back down, providing you with an excellent option to get through any mission, dungeon, lost sector, raid, or nightfall. And in some ways, I would say that this build is even better than it was last season. The Prismatic subclass will do a lot for Titans, but it doesn't provide Banner of War, and that is a game-changing difference. With the Banner of War aspect, whenever we defeat enemies with swords, melees, glaives, or finishers, we'll create a banner that extends out to a 10 meter radius, and it stays up for 15 seconds. Getting additional final blows will extend this banner up to 30 seconds, and while the banner is active, it'll continuously heal anyone that's within range, granting 20 points of health every 2.5 seconds. As you continue to defeat enemies, you'll build up stacks of Banner of War, and once reaching 4 stacks, those pulses of health recovery will be triggered every second. While inside the banner, melee, glaive, and sword damage will be increased. And since we are using the Syntheseps, we will have a 15% increase to melee damage, a 12.5% increase to glaive damage, 10% increased sword damage, and 20% increased super damage, while Biotic Enhancements is active. We are choosing to use Syntheseps over top of the Worm God, because Syntheseps are a much easier exotic to use. While the Worm God can deal out more damage, it does not increase your super damage, and because of how its Burning Fists buff functions, it can limit your gameplay mechanics. The Syntheseps provides the Biotic Enhancement's Intrinsic Trait, so whenever we are surrounded by at least 3 enemies, we'll gain an increase to our melee damage by 165%, increasing the damage of our Frenzy Blades and our Grapple Melee. We'll also gain a 100% increase to Glaive damage, giving us a lot of reasons to run Glaives like the Vex Caliber or the Winter Bite. This buff used to remain for 8 seconds, but now it's down to 5 seconds, which honestly doesn't really impact this exotic's performance. Along with the damage bonuses, we'll gain a 35 point increase towards weapon handling and reload speed whenever Biotic Enhancements is active. With increased melee and super damage provided by Banner of War and the Syntheseps, we'll be able to plow through the strongest of enemies while never having to worry about an untimely death. We're also using the Into the Fray aspect, and this is going to provide us with Woven Mail whenever we destroy a Tangle. This provides that Woven Mail to us and any nearby ally, and it will instantly provide an extra 10 points of health. Woven Mail will initially last for just 5 seconds, but its timer can be extended up to 10, and while it's active, we'll have a 45% increase to our damage resistance. We'll be able to create one tangle every 10 seconds, but because we are using the Elemental Siphon Artifact mod, whenever we rapidly defeat enemies with our Kinetic or Strained weapons, we'll generate an extra tangle. This will greatly extend our ability to trigger and maintain Woven Mail, and it gives us extra damage. And when it comes to our fragments, we are using Thread of Warding to give us another method of triggering that Woven Mail and we'll be able to generate those orbs thanks to the Reaper, Heavy Handed, and the Helmet Siphon Armor mods that we've got equipped. We've got Thread of Generation, so as we deal damage, we'll continuously generate small chunks of extra grenade energy, helping us recharge that powerful grapple melee. We're also using Thread of Fury, so whenever we hit enemies with a Tangle, we'll generate bonus melee energy. This will be based on the combatant's difficulty level, providing us with between 10 and 30% bonus energy. Between these two fragments, we'll generate a ton of bonus energy, but to expand on that even further, we are using the Counter Energy and Shield Crush Artifact mods. Counter Energy will provide 25% bonus energy to the least charged ability each and every time we stun a champion. 
and Shield Crush is going to give us a 25% bonus to the regeneration rate of our melee energy and a 25% increase to melee damage whenever we have Woven Mail active. So if you're keeping track, that's going to give us up to a 205% increase to the damage of our frenzied blades, our grapple melee, and our light super attack. Plus we're going to have exceptional uptime of all of those abilities. Our fourth fragment is a bit of a toss up. I really like Thread of Ascent because it automatically reloads our equipped weapon whenever we use our grapple but I also like the bonus damage potential when using Thread of Propagation because our strained weapons will start hitting enemies with unraveling rounds, dealing bonus damage over time. We do plan on equipping at least one, if not two, strained weapons with this build. The most notable two are the Call Rocket Sidearm and the Swordbreaker Shotgun. The biggest benefit that we'll have when running a shotgun will be the addition of 1-2 Punch, which will greatly increase our melee damage even more. After hitting enemies with the majority of the pellets from a single shot, we'll gain a 100% increase to the damage of our frenzied blades, and a 150% increase to our grapple melee, bumping our maximum damage potential with those melees up to the extent of 300 to 350% bonus damage, which is absolutely insane. We talked about a few of our equipped artifact mods already, but to add to the ones that you already know, we are using Winning Hand, but only when we are using Pale Heart weapons, like the Call. We're also using Threaded Blast, so whenever we destroy a Tangle with a Strand weapon, the detonation will be larger, hitting enemies for more damage. We're also using Expanding Abyss, because whenever we debuff an enemy with a Void Weakening effect, we'll deal increased damage with any Void weapon based on what tier debuff was used. If we use a weapon like the Buried Bloodline, we'll deal 25% bonus damage instead of just 15%. But if we use a weapon like the Tractor Cannon, we'll have a 35% increase with those Void Weapons, instead of a 30%. This has a substantial impact on our choice in weaponry, as it gives us the potential to do a lot of extra bonus damage, just by using Void Weapons. In most situations, I find loadouts that revolve around the Tractor Cannon and 1-2 Punch to be much more effective. But since Swords do get the nod towards Overload Champions, and they get several artifact mods that increase ammo efficiency and their damage, then a loadout that revolves around the Buried Bloodline and the Crown Splitter or Fallen Guillotine starts looking pretty damn spicy. Some other notable exotic weapons to include in your loadout would be the Graviton Lance, the Navigator, or the Leviathan's Breath. And in terms of legendary weapons, those that come with Pugilist or Grave Robber would cater to our focus around Grapple Melees and Frenzy Blades. And when it comes to our Void Weapons, Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds would be great options to piggyback off of Expanding Abyss. We already mentioned a few of the armor mods that we're using, but let's go ahead and take a deeper look into our choice in armor. The main character stats that we want to focus around will start with Resilience, which will reduce our incoming damage. Beyond that, it will be Discipline and Strength, so that we'll have the shortest possible cooldown time on those grapples and melees. And if we can afford it, investing a few points into recovery would be a smart idea. But if you can't afford it, there's always armor mods like Font of Restoration, which would give us bonus recovery whenever we have armor charges active. I just wouldn't recommend using any fonts if you're also using melee or grenade kickstart. But currently, we have elected to not use either of those mods so that we can invest extra points into our recovery, giving us more of an advantage towards our survivability. We're also using mods like Outreach and Invigoration so that we can regenerate extra melee energy whenever collecting orbs and whenever casting our barricade. Between the energy that our subclass and artifact will provide us, our armor mods are just going to be the icing on the cake. And with rapid regeneration of our abilities, the massive damage bonus to those abilities, and the bonus in damage that our void weapons will have, there's not an encounter out there that will be able to stop this Synthesep strand build. So call it boring, call it old fashioned. It might not be the flashiest new thing around, but this strand build won't back down, and it won't let you down. And that's why this is, in my opinion, the ultimate in-game Titan build. And with that said, that's going to bring us to an end of today's build video, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about the state of Strained Titans, the Syntheseps, and anything else Destiny-related that you want to talk about. Let us know down in the comments. 
Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you're a new Light Guardian just starting your journey, or a battle hardened veteran just looking for a new home, then be sure to check out the Discord link down in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of Destiny. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.